All right, let's get going here. This is going to be Team Pointless versus Trig Esports. If Trig wins this, this will end the day. Uh, we already have two wins from Spicy Waffles, am I correct? Or do we only have one? Um, we have two wins for Trig, one win for Spicy Waffles, one win for Pointless going into this game between Pointless and Trig. So if Pointless do win this game against Trig, that puts them on two and more than likely going through. All right, but More if Pointless loses this game, it's very likely that it's going to be over. Trig already up 1-0. 2-0. They already have Trigger two wins. Two mm -hmm. Also, Trig, Trig is through. Pretty much. At this point, Trig is just be. looking yeah. to eliminate Pointless. They're chilling. Yeah, in essence, they are potentially just eliminating Pointless by playing this game. All right, so we're going to be getting started in a few seconds here. It looks like we're going to have a pretty uh, meta start here. No one looks for invades just yet. No, nope, doesn't look like we're seeing invasions. We see the picks and bans on your screen. Oh, sorry, we don't have picks and bans for you, but we can tell you about them. We saw Sir Cat Cupid banned away by Pointless. Athena Poseidon were banned away by Trig in this game. And Zayla's going to be on his back of Sora up against Vamana. Now, from my knowledge of the solo lane and how Zalia knows it, he knows the matchups that are good in his favor, and he chose Bakasora before the Vamana pick. I think Vamana has an okay time against Baka for the most part, just because he can what farm safely. What is Lobster doing? Why did Lobster wait so long? I guess he's he looking okay? for potential invades. He was there in time, though. But... I mean, he, he was there to get that the buff, but the buff took longer. Because he wasn't oh, there. Oh, no, no, no. Right. Pointless last game. Do you remember the last game we casted? Right. Pointless invaded at the speed buff. Right. So he's looking to see if he needs to rotate over towards the right side. So they went, they came through middle lane, rotated around the back. No, it wasn't Pointless, was it? It was upcoming stars who did it. They came through mid, yeah, rotated sausage. to the speed buff, and do it. So Lobster stays in mid lane to, see to make sure that rotation happens. doesn't happen, then turns up late for the red buff, and it's fine. It's a good call, actually. It looks weird at first, but it was really smart. Uh, very early rotation coming out from the Pikachu uh, needs to make something out of this. I mean, if you rotate early, you wind up stripping away from your mid, who's already a little bit farther behind than they should be, considering the solo laner does get two buffs to start. It's going to wind up being a detriment to the mid laner. Uh, as you can see, Skrit is not level 3, at least not soon enough. Uh, just barely getting into it there on his final tick. I don't think it's too bad the fact that it's a Scylla that he's doing it against, and you want to wreck any big as early as possible. So getting her as much experience in gold by stripping away from the Scylla is not going to be as big of a detriment than stripping it away from a Vamana in the early stages. Uh, Script will have to catch it back up, though, and they're doing a good job of sharing experience in the lanes as well. Both the two teams did exactly the same thing, Pointless and Trig, in terms of going to back Harpies with the jungler and mid laner to share the experience up. They should both hit four. Glory Q is in a lot of trouble, or at least he should have been. Trix Tank a little bit slow on the draw on the right side, uh, or rather left side. Left side, though, uh, Cubo Fred also is freely stealing away at back camps. Will the babies do anything they here? No, he, he knows the better yeah. of it. Teleport right over the wall. That was just Cubo and um, Agony doing better pressure on the minion wave earlier on. They knew he was going for that, but they couldn't stop it because they would have lost experience in mid lane. They had to choose the lesser of two evils, but in that evil, they still lost experience. Even with the Hand of the Gods used there, Zelia still has so much aura about him that Arn King is afraid to push. He would have won that engagement on push potential, but for some reason gives it away and actually misses a creep as a result. And now Zelia's going to be level 5 right now, and he's just going to position himself on the outskirts of this wave to try and even deny this creep from Arn King getting the last hit on it. So a little bit of gold taken away there. Zelia's going to continue pressuring the wave. Mid lane once again, Lobster Kivo farming up, looking for level 5. There's the both of the Trig boys at level 5 right now. Pikachu a little bit further ahead of Skrit hitting level 5 a little bit earlier. That's because of the minion soak that we saw and spoke about. <gasps> A lot of damage. Hey. Pikachu getting greedy there, looking for the Venomous Bite, which is level 2. Okay amount of healing. I mean, a, not a crazy amount. And definitely got a little bit more aggressive than he should have. Uh, left side, Trix Tank only level 4, knows that he can't go in. Uh, Flurry Q just almost hitting 5 there. Not quite because of the split. Right camp gets split two ways, it seems, uh, with yep. Lobster hitting level 6 slightly before Skrit does. Yeah, Zelia actually managed, had all the time in the world to rotate over there and soak up the experience from the mid harpies. He does miss a little bit of gold, but made up for it anyway because of the fact that he went for those mid harpies. So he's going to turn back up to his lane. We do see Arn King has gone back to base and continued working on Runeforge Hammer. Smithy's Hammer now online for him. Going to look for the defense to deal with Thor and Bakasora in this lane. I love how patient 
Lobster is. He, you know, he sees the spider coming in, and he gets hit by the babies. Any other Agni would have dashed. He just calmly walks into the tower, turns around, throws some auto attacks, pulls the other babies, and then clears the wave, still full health. I mean, that is why he is the best Agni player. He's very relaxed on Agni. Agni's a really relaxing god to play as well, unless you make it stressful for yourself. You can just relax, play how he's supposed to be played, position yourself perfectly, and life's generally uh -oh. easy. Thor's, Kivo's looking for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thor's, um, so's, Thor's so's possibly tricks. going up. Trick's going to go in him. to see if they can force fresh time to dash, and it looks like he'll... Yeah. Uh, calmly walk away as well now we did see fresh times earlier on in the day play this god to uh, some pretty decent success until the throw at the end of the game um for right now though trig is still holding it down with a small advantage yeah, I mean, Fresh Times is a very good Hunter player. He's been known around for a while. He's in Masters as well, so you see him all the time up there. He understands the Hunters, and his positioning there was pretty good. He was in minion range, but he wasn't overextended too much either, which is the important thing. The thing about this lane matchup, though, overall, I'm interested in Ho Yi, because we don't see much Ho Yi just yet. We saw a little bit out of Emelita last week. This is the first time I've seen Fun Baller play in this god. Yeah, we, we saw Emelito last week. I mean, I think Ho Yi is in a great spot. He's very balanced, doesn't really lose any matchups, uh, except for Cupid, which is a pretty dominant matchup, very similar to how Cupid will beat Shibalanke. But he has a lot of space control, a lot of damage potential. I really like the god. Yeah, I, I like the god too. I think he's very on the difficult side of the hunters, though, to play, because the ricochet, one of his most important skills, is very difficult to confirm the damage of. You have to position it correctly at all times. He does have a lovely ability, though, with his two, which is known as the Mark of the Golden Crow. Right. That uh, reduces the amount... Sorry, that actually deals pretty much health-based damage, so he does 5% of missing health, which is quite a lot. Um... I really, you know, I think, you know, speaking of the difficult god, a lot, I mean, almost all of the most recent gods have been uh, a very high skill cap. Ho Yi, a Wheelish, uh, Nox, Sir Cat, Sir, uh, yeah, Sir Cat. Uh, maybe not super recent as we get uh, a little bit of pressure going on. Fumball trying to get away. Boulder going to hit a few. Fumball's very low here. This could be first blood. They should be first blood. Fresh Tablet's going to pick it up and the point of flowing to a tricks as big as well. And but Ogni. Trouble, but Lobster turns up to the point. You greedy guy. Guess what else is coming? You, you can go greedy down. Pikachu. I think he might have just sold out Flurry Q. Beautiful rotation. Q. Well, Fred gonna find another. But here comes the I'm a monster. The reset is big. The reset is huge. Lobster in some trouble here. Pat the Flames available. Not gonna hit that one. A three for three trade as Arn King actually picks up Zelia in the right. A win for Team Pointless. A win for Team Pointless across the map, not just in that duo lane. Arn King managing to beat out Zalia in that situation, especially after the start he had. Really well played from him. He's going to get a free wave of experience there, deny a wave of experience to Zalia, and be able to recall back to base or even pressure the tower. It looks like he's going to rotate for mid harpies now as well. That's put Arn King big in that lane up against Zalia. Why? I mean, I, I just don't understand how Arn King was able to pick up Zalia with Zelia having Iqbal at this stage, there there must have been something that we didn't get to see. Was there tower shots going down? Was it a dive? I don't know. I, don't, I mean, the position of the minions doesn't show that there was tower shots that went down there. The position of the minions was just in mid, generally. They were in mid, middle of the lane. There was no over pressure there. I guess with the Iqbal, I felt like maybe Zelia felt they could go all in. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh-oh, like straight in a lot of trouble. Oh, just barely getting away with that Sentinel uh, in the back line. Arachne might not be in a good spot. They probably should have aggressed there. Keeping a timer should have shown them that there was no ultimate available. Thor should have had that timer on, uh, given the fact that he could have judged it against his own. So a small drop there for Cubo Fred. Small drop for him. Seven minutes in, seven and a half minutes in this game now. Golden experience is even, but the goal here he's being locked up by I trick now with Agni there and that this damage and Hoki's ultimate. Wow! Team. Oh, that was fast. Oh, and boys uh, of trick. Cubo oh, goes up here. Is he looking to go in? I think he'll just escape. Yeah. A big win there for Trig. A small gain in experience will put them in the lead, but the goal difference spells the story as the cliff drops. Thirteen hundred gold in the lead. First time we've seen Ho Yi other than when Melito played him. I like the decision of using Agni and Ho Yi's ultimates there just to burst that down in a matter of seconds before opponents could even realize what was going on and react to it. So now they've got themselves a little bit of an advantage again, not by much, because they let Pointless back into this one. Keep an eye on Script because he's already 2 and 0 now. But Lobster doing some nice poke damage onto him. They're going to try and turn this one around from the Pikachu, but Lobster. 
quite relaxed once again. Yeah, he dashes away that time uh, to make sure he doesn't get hit uh, by the web, which is very, very important. Uh, Cocoon at this stage is going to do a decent amount of damage, so I think it was very smart of him to walk away. So, Agni plays at the moment as well are currently in a situation where you're like, what do I get as my first item? They used to go Bancrofts into Penetration Boots with a sort of standard two, maybe Penetration, then Bancrofts. Then they'd look for Spare the Magus. But then some were thinking, maybe Doom Orb. Maybe Doom Orb's the way to go I love on Doom this Orb. god now. But then... They, they constantly think, oh, maybe I go for the Warlock Slash, maybe I go for Toth, I'm not sure. At the moment, though, on Lobster, he's gone for CDR Boots and finishing off Bancrofts, Next because be the spear. Bancroft sustain is fantastic. It will be Spear. That's, that's always guaranteed in an Agni build, is the Spear. There's no hesitation in that one. But it's the starting items that I like to see, and I'm interested in out of the Agnes, because, like I said, Doom Mob, Toth, Warlock Slash, we've seen multitudes of different items picked up from them in the last couple of days over the, uh, an A tournament as well. Agnes are always building differently, but Lobster's gone pretty much standard here from Season 1. Uh, Zalia trying to apply pressure, but he's getting beat on every exchange. Uh, will Arn King decide to go for this? He does have the pressure. He really should have walked up there. He can chase the jump with his dash and then ult in reaction to regurgitate. Worried about Thor, though? But, yeah, perhaps worried about Thor. I mean, I think he'd be able to live through all of that, but oh, either way. I agree. And the left-hand side, though, we're going to see Pontinus taking away the, the left-hand harpies as well. Pikachu looking for a bit of aggression on Lobster once again. Lobster, nice and relaxed about it. One more time. Doesn't take too much damage from that one. And now the right one's still standing as Scrit pressures this mid lane. There's still two swinging around the left. Lowy's looking for a pull here. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think he's going to find it, though. I mean, they're pretty far away. Uh, over the wall, though, sending some damage out. <laughs> Lobster not going to hit the second bomb, just sending Elam some warning no, shots. He let him know that they've got a ward there. That's the one thing that he gave away by doing that. There's a ward in that area. Immediately, there's no way they would have seen it any other way. Right hand side, though, Arn King does rotate for those right hand harpies and find them available. As mid lane, you get a pull onto Pikachu. Nice bit of damage returned, but Pikachu doesn't panic, doesn't use his ultimate again. He's very patient on that ultimate, is Pikachu. Azalea right now uh, out pushing for a small amount. Uh, still a level behind there, trying to send some damage to Arn King. This might be uh, a misguided attempt here, uh, but no, Arn oh, King pushing so. away too late. Going to give a free kill to Zalia. Now In the left-hand side, though, we've got a fight breaking out. Flory Q uses his ultimate to disengage this fight. One member of the team's already down in fresh times. Fumble are looking for the ricochet onto Skrit. Not going to find it, though. And it's a disengage on that side, too. One for one trade across the side. Two for zero trade across the map in favor of Trig. Yeah, that was a big deal, too. They already had a small lead. It's been massively increased now as you see the drop-offs happening once again. 2,100 in the lead in gold. So we sat now at the 11-minute mark. The lead is in Trick's favor. Skrit currently sat. Looks like he's working on Warlock Slash next after going for the Shoes of Focus. So looking to start the stacking up. Going to get aggressed on by Kuvo. That double tap did enormous damage there. And we do see Kuvo is maxing his hammer first. He's already maxed that one. Looking for the double taps. Oh, jumping away there. Nature's Grasp almost spelling some disastrous push for Lobster, but he's going to be able to push it out there. Uh, right side, Zalia looks like pressuring down the tier one as Arn King returns to the lane at uh, an even level. A small experience ad ad advantage here still for Arn King, uh, but Zalia will be able to normalize that very quickly. Uh, he does have 600 gold in hand right now, uh, which is most likely next up uh, either going to be Chin Size, of course, or oh. Executioner. Lovely wall coming out from Kuvo, Fred, there just to confirm the tier 1 tower in mid lane, make sure Pikachu couldn't get involved and defend it at all. Zaley's a little bit out of position here, needs to be a bit careful, just going to jump away back to safety for now. But that tower going down in mid opens the map up for Trig one more time. Gold Fury due up in 14 seconds means we will start seeing a siege there soon. And at the moment, we don't, we've got a, we've got a sentry on Flory Q here, he's holding it at the moment though. He's waiting for them to place one first so we can get a ward for free. There's actually two sentry wards in each inventory right now, which is pretty strong considering that the the team that gets the last one down will control the vision so long as they can protect their investment. Neither team wants to waste theirs too early. Tricks with a regular ward uh, likely will gain the first spot of vision should he choose to put it down, baiting out the sentry. Well, left and harpies have been started again by Pongus. They've got those on lockdown, have had it on lockdown for quite some time now. Fresh time, still happy to farm up against Fumball. These two hunters not really getting involved in each other 1v1. They're waiting more for the supports and the others to engage. Kiva in the jungle, looking for a bit of aggression on Skrit. Not going to find it. Dodges a pull. Actually, all it there because he was worried about getting hit by that one. 
And now that's going to be on cooldown, and the Gold Fury is still available. So here's a curious little point. Zelia has gone into power uh, for boots on Warrior Tabby instead of Ninja Tabby. Uh, generally seen as not as strong on Bakasura, especially at this level when Butcher Blades are swinging very, very hard. Uh, curious to me to see this built so early on. Is it because he's trying to rely on the passive for the attack speed he's getting from that and the mobility and then just use the raw damage that he's going to have in his kit to, you know, provide that for him, I guess? Perhaps. I mean, he does have Eggfall as well. He's also working on Executioner by the looks of it. He's got Light Blade online. It could be a Chins as well. He's going to get enough attack speed for that. So he's not looking for the attack speed boost. It's the only reason I can think of him doing it. Uh, so grouping here still on the left side as uh, looks like Flurry Q trying to answer oh, back Zalia. the word potential. Zelia's gonna get himself into a fight on this right hand side. Forced out the armor from Pikachu there, though. It. No, he didn't but, steal it. No, he didn't steal it, but he did actually force Pikachu's ultimate. At the same time, he knows there's two on that side, which means Trigger going aggression on the Gold Fury again. And they've already started to bring it down. Cubo and Amtrix on the zone injury right now. Cubo is the one with the wall, hitting onto Flurry to make sure he can't blink in. The boulder's gonna double tap it as well as Trig get the Gold Fury again. Second one of the game going in their favor, extending their gold lead once you know, more. This is the same thing we talked about when we watched them earlier on their team fight potential is incredible but they don't play conquest they're playing arena they're always looking for big fights and they're not playing the objectives on the map how many times now have we seen gold theories happen in either game that are, have been either uncontested or Cubo's close up. to uncontested Kubo's down he's actually looking for Flurry Q here he uses the ultimate to try and turn some damage back it's going to escape for now but can Fresh Times and Pikachu follow up on this one now well they're going to spy he's going to hit Fumballer but he pops Sprint to keep the disengage going Fresh Times though super fast so is Pikachu has to jump away Kubo's in trouble has to jump away as well Squirt's late to the party Lobster is here as well to protect against the Pikachu ultimate pop from Squirt he's looking for it he's trying to get Fumball so close not going to get uh, Lobster right now versus two, taking a lot of damage, crush inducing a lot as well, but he's able to dodge under 20 oh health did he God, leave tricks. that fight, and he's still alive. Tricks just say all the poison to protect Lobster from eating a single one. Everybody lives in that engagement, nobody dies, but off that, Arkin gets right on Harpies again. We go back to continuing farming. Golden Experience stays in Trick's favor still. <gasps> Arn's coming mid. Will we see a fight? Uh, possible. I don't think he has enough damage to burn down Trick's too easily, especially with Cubo there. Uh, we'll see, though. He I decides to go into the Colossal Fury. Uh, good dodges coming out from Trick's tank. Does Cubo have the same? Yes, as he blinks. Arn King will have used his ultimate. Now, there's not a doubt in my mind that they won that fight. I mean, pointless forced ultimates. They didn't lose anyone. They kept the pace. But what did they gain? Nothing. They gained nothing absolutely nothing. In fact, they lost an entire creep wave on left. With the way that the creeps are winning over here, it looks like they're ab about to lose another one as well. Uh, you can see Fumball is rotating over. That's a, a pretty decent advantage. Oh my god, Onking's dead. Onking is dead. Oh, Zelia just wow. turned up and ate his face. Execution of charge bow. That's why he's got no attack speed. Boots DM. Because he was going to go charge bow as well. And if he kept getting all that attack speed, he would overcap. That's right. He burns him down, knowing that Colossal Fury was on cooldown, uh, giving Trig an even bigger lead. The tunnel vision is too strong on Team Pointless. They are not looking for the stuff after the stuff, as F.O so eloquently puts it. They're all Always looking for just an opportunity to get kills and that's not always what the game's about it's about gold furies and towers and baits and right now Trig has all of those things on lock there's Jaguar already on cooldown the ultimate has to be used by Jubilonki and Flurry Q to disengage it so a win for a single wall used by Kuvo Fred there Trig in a good position they're poking around looking for an opportunity but meanwhile what's going on on the right hand side here DM Zeli is getting a free T2 Arn King will be back just in time for a front row seat to a 1,500 gold deficit once again. Left side, uh, Pikachu going deep again against two. Mark of the Golden Crow will send him into the infinite Still web. And Cubo, Fred going deep on the right side of at least the left side jungle to uh, push out Skritwin. Uh, either way, that was a big win from Trig across the map. Trig just got three ultimates. They got Jibalonkes, they got Sylvanas's, and they got Pikachus as well on that Arachne for free. Yeah, they, they, they used a the Thor ult yet. and the third Agni bomb's about to come back up. I mean, there was nothing used there of super relevance. Uh, over on the right side, Zelia getting aggressive here. Uh, with Oh my, that was much faster than I was expecting. 
Yep, that's very quick. And, and instead now he's of jumping over the, the wall, mission. Hindu man, he just walks past him and ports <laughs> him to clear the path. That's what I'm talking about when we talk about Zelia. His aura, his presence is so threatening. And look at his actives. He's only got sprint. Only got sprint. He's that's cleaning all he's up the got. small ones. He just wants to fight. He he's just two wants people to fight. here. He's cleaning up the small ones and chasing them out. Pikachu needs to respect the fact that he's not got his ultimate here. He's also level 14, which I'm sure Zelia is taking into account. Is Pikachu trying to bait this because he keeps throwing in the back here? I don't know why he's trying to bait him into a fight. Is his ultimate coming up soon? It's down for another 17 seconds. If Zelio realized if the team had called the Pikachu's ult down, Pikachu could die for that. Bit risky. Little bit. Now, despite the fact that Trigg's only two kills ahead, look at the difference. 7,700 experience, 7,500 gold. Zelia's up two levels. Cubo's up a level. Lobster's up a level. Trick's up two levels. Fumball is even. Uh, overall, not a bad start here for Trig Esports. Gold Fury coming up in 20. They're 2 and 0 in the group stage right now. They're pretty much already guaranteed, pretty much the way through oh to it. And there's Zaylee getting another kill on Onking. Zaylee's going to become a big issue in this game now. He's huge in this lane. Onking had signs of life at the start, put the pressure on, but Zaylee came back strong and now they can't deal with him. Uh, looks like Gold Fury is up. Uh, all eyes here for me will be on Flurry Q as he attempts to work his way past Trix Tank. Oh, he's gonna blink in this time. A little time bit too early, buddy. To get in early. But is he gonna just pay the ultimate price? He is. He's gonna knock up for now and try and escape. But there's Zalia. He's gonna keep the chase going. He's got sprint available if he so needs it. No, he doesn't because he's on cooldown. But Flurry's still gonna go down. Cubo's going up his Pikachu. He needs to watch himself here. Oh, Cubo dropping down here, not going to get the stun on the script that he needed thanks to the beads. And Fresh Times comes in. Pikachu in the front line. I'm a monster. Will he find the kill he needs? Will he even Caught. use it? No, will be pushed out. Trick's tank going for the kill. Sentinel will get him out of danger. But Pikachu not out just yet. No, he's not. And Trick's tank going to continue the pressure on the front line. They can't get anything gold else from theory. this, but what they can get is the gold. Really? I expected Fire Giant off that. They, they could have, actually. They could yeah, have. I mean, that would have been, that would have been more than free. Let's take a look at Arn King. Level 1 Hand of the Gods, Colossal Fury Online. But I don't think anyone's really afraid of it, especially with Trick Tank. Uh, of course, having that weakening cur or curse come up in a few seconds, Arn King will not have enough pressure to blow it down. With this, they are rotating towards the right side, uh, kind of gesturing towards the Fire Giant. But realistically, it won't be as easy this time. Flurry Q does have his Hand of the Gods available. Uh, Trix Tank does not. No, he doesn't in mid lane. Fumball oh, is going to land the ricochet onto Pikachu. Get hit by stun from Lobster. And if that operation happens, Earthbreaker does not connect from Trick. So onto Skrit. Skrit managing to get away the Sentinel. And now the pressure is still going on from Trig. Will they just rotate for the fire now? They're only up against three members of Pointless now. Sorry, two. Two? Four. Four? Two, three. I can't Seven. math today. <laughs> 82. Why not? Arcing Arcing taking a some damage. Uh, not a lot considering how tanky he is. Uh, but for as long as he's going to have to sustain in this area, it could be detrimental. Golden Hand is going to be spent here by everyone on Trig, except for it looks like mid and jungle. And with that, Zelia full sprint, rage online with Executioner, Iqbal, Oboe. I mean, he has two... 0.27 attack speed with a 30% window as well from his passive. Will be slightly overcapped it seems, but honestly I don't think he's too worried about it. No, I don't think he is. He's with that execution, sorry, with that rage online right now. That damage is going to be absolutely insane. If he hits you, you're going to disappear. When he regurgitates, it's AoE damage as well. So if he gets a big group in, which is a potential from this team, it could end up happening. Now it's pointless his turn to try and defend the fire giant. They know it's going on. What was that junk you were about? Oh, I was looking at the other side here where Zelia continues to fight multiple people at once. Uh, I don't think he's going to get the eat minion that he's looking for. Needs two more seconds. Look what Will this creep die? No, actually, he does heal Left up. Left hand side. Left hand side, we're going to see Fumball trying to bring down this tower. He's going to find it in time, and then maybe he'll turn the attention to Fresh Times. The fight is on beads already used by Fresh Time. He's trying to bring the darkness to the party. Oh, he brings the fire suns down. But Fresh Times uses the jacket with the train. He's coming up between the two. But Fresh Times wins it out. Tier 2 tower for a kill. You know, I think the ultimate might have cost him a little bit too much there. Uh, when you cast it, I mean, you're a sitting duck. It must be done so much earlier. So in that, he winds up getting picked off a power play here now for Pointless. Should they choose to group up, they will have an advantage, uh, but it doesn't seem like they're utilizing this advantage well. 
what do you do in the situation as punish? You go fire giant now with this with this lead. You push out the lane. I so think they go. I just they, they gotta push and go for a pick. I think their best bet is to collapse on Zalia here, uh, but they haven't chosen to do. Uh, 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 um, 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 collapse on Zalia, you um, say? That was a collapse by Zalia on two targets. <laughs> it fails. <laughs> two of you. There's six now. of me. <laughs> well, now he's going to be able to go for the Phoenix. Flurry Q, Skrit, and Fresh Time's on the way, but so is Lobster and tricks. And we'll see what's going to happen now as Skrit gets caught out. You know, what I'm seeing here is Zalia is just untouchable. I mean, if there was four people, that might not have even gone well. You're right. Maybe they couldn't even do that then. The Charge Bow doing a lot. Now, remember, Iqbal's going to increase his damage uh, by a total of 30, making sure that he goes up to 160. Half of that damage will be applied, uh, plus 30. Uh, as the charge or the oboe gets sent out, so Tricks. I mean you're, you're looking at big hits. Tricks, we need to we need to talk to you about this fire giant and how to tank it. Like yeah, for real. Tricks. It's been Please, it's been two months now. It's been a long time now, and people still haven't realized how to tank a fire giant. I'm depressed by that one, Tricks tank. You just like jumped up in the air several times. I know you're tanky and I know you're Hercules, but still, like, come on, bro. Yeah, Zalia That's too gonna... too strong right now. Zaylee's monstrous right now. The, the scary thing is that he went 0-1 in lane against Arkin. I would like to see him like, pick up red if he has the opportunity to. I don't know how long. No, he's not going to take it. But Zalia right now with the Iqbal stack is looking at 210 power, which means he's looking at 135 hits, right, from the, well, the, from the oboe. He's got 2,000 in the bank. What's he going to spend it on? That's the question. He's gone back to base now. Not he's does. thinking. He's looking. Medj, I like it. Why not? I think I would have liked to see the beads here instead and get a little bit more damage going. Beads but on the cooldown the... reset would have been a little bit stronger. Yeah, beads would have hurt. Yes, yeah, true. Beads would have helped, but Medj eyes is like, is technically beads every 60 seconds, you know? I guess. Yeah, but there's bad beads. 45 seconds. Yeah, I know it's bad beads because you don't get to choose when it's done. But how much has he got to really worry about? He's got to worry about a root from Scylla, a knock-up from Sylvanas. Arking, not really a knock-up there. Watch Zaley around the back. Here we go. Oh He's going to go with the regurg. God! Chunk, 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 chase, chunk, <laughs> chunk, chunk, chunk. He actually chunk. doesn't make it out with a kill there. Uh, but his team, they got tier two. <laughs> his team did get the tier two. Where is Thor? Wow, he took a long time to get down. I don't feel like the team was as supportive as they needed to be. Pointless has a really good chance to turn this one around. Never they mind. Do, but just evaporated Never before mind. he could do anything on the front line. No one else was with him. Fresh time's going to go down to fun ball of two. Phoenix is going to fall in the mid lane. Now Skrit has used the crush. He's got nothing else left to help defend this Phoenix in the mid lane. And Trig end up trading Zalia for a Phoenix. I would have liked to see Lobster go forward to help Zalia. They didn't really need his damage on the tower. Had he dashed forward and spent some of those bombs out earlier, it's likely Zalia not only would have lived, but done some decent damage as well. Maybe even mm. getting kills or forcing the kill potential. Uh, even so, four of them remain, and Pikachu, uh, wow. Do you see the bait? You see Trick Tank with the bait? Doesn't use the driving strike there to ensure that he uh, doesn't put it on cooldown because he knew the beads would happen. Doesn't get to follow up, though, uh, as the mid laner Skrit put down a Beautiful Sikkim. The cocoon comes out as well. But even so, the damage has been done. The gold fury has been taken as well. Almost 17,000 in gold will separate these two teams. I do not see a way back into this one now for pointless triggering it. I'm just too big right now. Zaley has zoned out the whole team alone. They got a Phoenix after and a Gold Fury. Now the Fire Giants still online for four of their members. They can just push down, split. They could just split push now. Send Zaley one lane, the rest of the team go the other. And it'll work out fine. You know. I don't know how I feel about Arachne Hindu Man. You know, for two days we've been watching this character do very poorly. And and for me, I, th I think I have her in the 8 tier right now. I think that might be going down in the next phase. No, you it's, can't do that. She's, like her, she just doesn't do anything. Her solo lane, she's very, very strong in the solo lane. Her, Isn't that the spiders? one game we saw Cyclone lose was his Arachne? Was that it? Possibly, but I still think she's really strong in the solo lane. Her slow on the spiders is just too much. 50% movement speed, and she's got three chins yeah. built into a kit from a passive. You can't lower it down, DM. She's too good. People just need to realize how to abuse it in the right situations. Because right now, Trigger, the ones that are trying to abuse the fact Bakasura is a monster in this game. They're looking for the Phoenix right. They're grouping as five. Trix is going to tank up the way. Yeah, Trix will reset it there after the final one. Uh, Tower hasn't taken too much damage as the darkness comes out. Uh, Cubo taking some himself, but Pikachu getting answered back way too oh. quickly. Lobster picks Lobster. up Pikachu and 
for nobody. Lobster taking about a third of his health. Otherwise, they're sitting clean. Still FG. Uh, actually, no, FG has gone down. Um, oh, okay, going right to the ultimate is Arn King. They're going to need that for the Fire Giant pressure, and they don't have it anymore. Nope, they don't have it anymore. They can still get this Phoenix for free. If Trix just chooses to tank this, he's waiting for Mitigate Wounds. He'll go in again. They're going to pressure it at the same time. Zone out, screw in the left, in the middle, sorry. Lobster went for some fire bombs there. Arn King gets pulled in again this time, Son. Cubo! Son to death, run down, Cubo. Taking out Arn King, the Phoenix falls, and Trig, and marching on. Yeah, it looks like they're going to choose the safe route here and finish up the structure. Ooh, Left side pull. is coming oh, up soon. No, pull. maybe they could actually end if they find Skrit here. Uh, and he's getting low. Will Trix Tank goes for the kill. Doesn't quite get it. No, he doesn't. But Zalia's there to chunk the damage down of Pikachu. False an ultimate in trade. How Yi returns to the jungle. Fumball are going to sustain off those back harpies. That's why he's gone back to farm because he had like two HP left. After the engagement, the whole team trick recall. They're going to go back to base. They're going to buy items and they're going to go for the fire giant to end this game out. You know, Zalia is slightly ahead in top damage and it's almost all because of the uh, oboe damage. I'm sure uh, Lobster's like, this stupid item is cheap. <laughs> this, this, this god is cheap. That's what it'd be saying. Yeah. <laughs> no skill. Everything about it is cheap. No skill. <laughs> no skill involved at all. <laughs> Tricks back at the fire giant right now. Got to put a sentry down. Clear out the ward that Flowey Q just brought over to try and get some control. Fresh times hanging around here, as are the rest of Pointless. This is a rough situation to be in right now if you are Pointless because you've already lost one game to Waffles. That was a mistake, in fairness. They threw that game away because of the push. They didn't respect. The push available from Snake, sorry, not from Snake's in, but from the Bastet that caused issues for him. And now we're going to see the big commitment from Pointless looking to turn this one around. Oh, the double tap! But being used defensively on Kings alone. You know, and all the while they have to clean up these fire minions. Uh, one more wave coming of fire minions, it looks like for now. Cubo oh, goes real deep into the back line and is able to escape again. Uh, utilizing the weakness of Arachne to allow him to pressure into situations he normally couldn't. And now you're going to see Trix continue tracing in. Got to get the Earthbreaker on Flurry Q as well. Look on it. Got the driving strike delayed on purpose there to get a better angle into the Sons of Doom. And meanwhile, Zalia. Oh, he's doing <laughs> earlier things. Just diving towers. This Phoenix will go down here for free. Beautiful pull coming out from Trix. Uh, driving Trix strike pulls. as well will do a lot there as the final member of Pointless uh, Fresh Times at full health. Actually, Pikachu's uh, pretty healthy as well. They're going to try to defend against five. Fire Giant be damned, it seems, as they go for it. Titan, uh, about half health right now. Pikachu goes down. Fresh Times, I don't know if he has the damage. Going up into the air is Cubo. Fred coming right back down. Titan will fall, and with that, Triggs will find themselves 3-0 in Group B. Not a surprise, everyone expected Trig to come out top of the shop in this one, and they do do so. And what that means now is Pointless are one and I believe it's two, that's right, one and two in this group, along with Spicy Waffles, who are one and two, sorry, one and one, with one game to play against upcoming stars. If Spicy Waffles win that game, which I expect they will do, then it'll be Spicy Waffles and Trigger moving on to the Pro League DM. In Group A, though, we'll be heading over to there shortly, I believe. And we'll be doing... Let me check. Oh, no, we're going to be doing upcoming stars versus Spicy Waffles. Aha, we're okay, doing so the last game in this group. group out. Yeah, so we get to see how Waffles should be upcoming stars and go through. Okay. All right, um, with that, we will get ready for our what could be the final game. I don't know that it is just yet.